Everything has gone digital during the COVID-19 outbreak, including the Slippery Rock University's student government town halls. History is being made, and the Stonehouse Center for Public Humanities wants you to be a part of it. Stick around to find out how. I'm Joshua Peters. And I'm Samantha Amato, and you're listening to The Rock Talk, news brought to you by the SRU Rock Media. Stay up to date with WSRU TV and The Rocket as we journey through the quarantine together. The President's Commissions at SRU are seeking new members for the upcoming academic year. According to a campus-wide email sent out, the President's Commissions at SRU lead and engage the university through educational activities and programs that promote a campus that is open, caring, nurturing, fair, and respectful. The commissioners are appointed by the President and will range from students, staff, and administrators. Tina Moser, the Chief of Staff for the Office of the President, said SRU currently has eight presidential commissions and each commission has its own set of bylaws, which carries an average of 18 to 22 members. Monique Alexander, co-chair for the Commission for Racial and Ethnic Diversity, said her commission has about 24 members and just received three new student members for the first time. She said the commission also has representation from the Student Government Association, because of the link to the Social Justice Committee Chair, as well as a representative from Rock PRSSA, the Public Relations Student Society on campus. She said the mission for the Commission for Racial and Ethnic Diversity is to educate, advocate, and support students and faculty on the campus who declare themselves to be non-white. Monique also said her commission is in the process of auditing their members to see who will be staying and who will be going in order to make room for new members. Ryan Streifler, a co-chair for the Commission for Veterans and Military Affairs, said his commission has a wait list and does not currently need new members. He said his commission advocates for and brings visibility to military-affiliated students, which are veterans, people in the military, National Guard, ROTC, or people who have a relative who is in the military. Aside from the Commission for Racial and Ethnic Diversity and the Commission for Veterans and Military Affairs, SRU also has a President's Commission for Disability Issues, Women, Gender and Identity Expression, and Sexual Orientation, Wellness, Sustainability, and Mental Health. Interested individuals should send a brief letter of interest to tina.moser at sru.edu. That's T-I-N-A dot M-O-S-E-R at S-R-U dot E-D-U. Moser said she'll be working with the co-chairs at the end of the semester to review memberships and appoint new members. The Rocket, WSRU-TV, and the Slippery Rock Govern Association, SGA, hosted an election town hall Thursday on Zoom to give those running for executive board positions an opportunity to answer students' questions. The candidates in attendance included Senator Nick Condon, Speaker of the Senate Joey Sudo, Nathaniel Deesing, Senator Laith Lindgren, Vice President of Internal Affairs Mia Graziani, Senator Amanda Riley, and Senator Alexis Gish. Condon said he will work closely with administration as president to improve student life skills. Riley said she applied for Vice President of Outreach position to get involved with the bigger platform and gain more hands-on experience with students. Graziani is running for the Vice President of Internal Affairs position, and she is the only candidate running for the position she currently holds. She said she has grown a lot through this role and is excited to see what positions have to offer next year. Suda was running for president and said there was a lot of parallels between his current role and president position. He said he was able to practice a lot off communication skills like facilitating conversations and brainstorming in a group as Speaker of the Senate. Gish said she has always had a passion for following issues regarding diversity and inclusion. So she thought the position of vice president of diversity and inclusion would be perfect for her to be a part of change on campus. Deezing said he is running for the vice president of finance position because he has always been a numbers person and he was a part of the finance committee, so he has a better understanding of how things operate. Lingren said he enjoyed his time as a senator on the student and academic affairs committee and the vice president of student and academic affairs position because it is a combination of everything he likes. Most of the questions asked during the town hall revolved around the hope that students will return to campus in the fall. In the event that students do not return to campus because of COVID-19, Condon said he wants to make sure that SGA remains in contact with students. Sudo said he and SGA are up for the challenge if students were to not go back to campus in the fall semester. When the candidates were asked what they think the biggest issues facing SRU today, they had a range of answers. 
Condon said it is hard to pinpoint which one is the biggest, but he sees mental health as one of the bigger issues. Sudo said a possible solution for diversity and inclusion is involvement. And Gish said she believes that they must redefine the meaning of student government association and become more involved to have more of a connection with students. In conclusion of the town hall, Condon said he hopes to support the next vice president of diversity and inclusion by helping them as they carry out their duties. Graziani and Sudo agreed that attending campus events is another way they can support the vice president of diversity and inclusion. To vote for any executive board candidate, visit the SGA core page. Voting opened April 20th at 9 a.m. and will be closing April 28th at 5 p.m. Rock football is adjusting to the new normal. SRU football coach Sean Lutz and his team are adjusting to being unable to conduct their 15-team practices and three scrimmages in order to determine who would be making an impact on next season's team. Coach Lutz tells the Rocket that he feels worse for some of his coaching friends in the spring sports that didn't even get to have a season. He said at least they got a season and how he couldn't even imagine putting so much time, effort, sweat, and tears into it, but that they all understand why we are at this point. Lutz said the team will be ready for the new normal come fall. The Stonehouse Center for Public Humanities started their Rapid Response Archive Project, Shared Voices, Shared Experiences, and are looking for contributions to be a part of history. History professors, Drs. Aaron Cowan and Lisa Paradis, are also co-directors of the Stonehouse Center for Public Humanities, partnered with SRU Archives to reach out to the community. Callan said that the project wants to show every person's unique experience and hopefully in the future become a way for historians and archivists to understand the social history at the time. And any contributions are welcome and encouraged, especially journal entries, creative works, or other things that explain how someone is feeling at the moment. Anyone who wishes to contribute can visit slipperyrockcovid19.org backslash contribute. Both Cowan and Paradis believe that this will be an ongoing project and want to remind people that their lived experiences are important. The Women's Center hosted a video segment called Rock Talk on their YouTube channel, Women's Center Staff. This week, they introduced the video series, What Does It Mean to Live with a Disability in Today's America? Maggie Calvert, a senior political science and gender studies major, said she doesn't fit the character of being disabled, but said that having a disability that not many people originally see has put different themes in her life such as compromised autonomy and how struggling with control over it can lead to stains on her relationships. Other students also spoke in the Rock Talk series, such as Eric Knotts, a bilateral above-the-leg amputee who lost both his legs after contracting bacterial meningitis at 18 months old. Knotts said he has a lot of support from his family at a young age, but that they also taught him that he needed to do things for himself and on his own. He said that one of the hardest obstacles he had to overcome was growing up and getting to the age of middle school or hitting puberty and trying to play sports with his friends from school. Overall, the Rock Talk allowed students to share their stories, positive and negative, with others. And that is all from us on this Friday, April 24th. I'm Joshua Peters. Be sure to stay up to date with us all week on our Facebook page and the onlinerocket.com. Stay healthy and stay safe as we journey through the quarantine together.